Hey everybody, today we're going to look at the generic congressional vote as of early to mid-August, and the final results of this should theoretically give you a good idea of which party would control the U.S. House. We'll look at this year as well as some of the recent years. We'll see if there are any polling biases or if things can sometimes change in the lead-up to the election. So we're going to start here on Real Clear Politics, and we've got the 2024 generic congressional vote up. And this is a few days after the 6th of August, but there's been no new polls added since. And right now it's nearly a tie. Democrats have a two-tenths of a percent lead 45.9 to 45.7 so that's in the aggregate and all these individual polls underneath are the ones that are factored into that number so they have the pollster the date that the poll was taken and then they have the sample size and you can see all of these are at least 800 as some of them get into the multiple thousands and the rv indicates registered voters so they're not using likely voters yet in these samples that should happen as we get a little bit closer to the election now, i would expect some of these polls to be off in either direction but ideally once you average it all out you hope that it's not really off more than a point or two from the final total. So right now, the biggest outlier in these polls is this Harvard Harris poll. They have the GOP up four. They might be right, they might be wrong, or they might have been right at the time they took that survey. But of course, many times things can change over the next couple of weeks and certainly over the next couple of months. Now we could go down here a little bit further and take a look at the graph. And this will give you a timeline of the average going back to last summer. Now, I don't think it's overly useful to look at what happened a few months ago, certainly more than a year ago. But the benefit here is to show you how things can change over time. Time. So last July, Democrats had a similar advantage, 0.4. As you finish out that year, it kind of goes back and forth. But ever since last December and then all the way into this year, Republicans have had the advantage. It's not massive, but it did get to about two and a half points. Then in April, Democrats were able to regain the lead. Then by the end of May, it switched yet again. And then since then, it switched another couple of times, especially over the past few weeks. So a lot of times leads are fleeting when it comes to the generic congressional vote. It's not about who holds it two or six months in advance. It's about who's going to hold it on election day. Now, if you want to compare this to another aggregate, we've got 538. There's a similar, but Democrats have a little bit bigger lead. It's up to 0.8. And the timeline for the most part is similar. Democrats had a lead early to mid last year. Eventually, Republicans got the lead, but it's gone back and forth several times. And then down below, you can take a look at the same pollster data. They've got the dates, the sample size, the poll sponsor, and then the top line numbers. So there's new polls added all the time, usually at least two or three a week. As we get closer to the election, there's going to be a lot more that get added. Now, what we can do is compare this to how accurate the polling was just two years ago in the 2022 midterms. First, here's the final Wikipedia results. Republicans had 50.0, Democrats had 47.3. Now, if you get on real clear politics, the percentages are slightly different, but for the most part, the margin is very similar. Their final average had Republicans up two and a half. Republicans actually won by 2.8. I'd have to say in the aggregate, those are some pretty good results, only off by 0.3. Now, the individual polls are a different story. You can see Trafalgar overestimated the Republicans by a couple of points, Politico went in the complete opposite direction. They overestimated the Democrats by more than seven. And most of the other ones did have Republicans up by anywhere from two to four points. So that's why the aggregate data is so important. And this one, it turned out to be not even off by a half a point. And as you can also see in these final sample sizes, nearly all of them are using likely voters instead of registered voters. Now let's also go down here and take a look at this timeline. Here, going back a year before the election, Republicans had a clear advantage and they held that all the way into 2022. Now, halfway through that year is when that Supreme Court abortion decision came out that might have given Democrats the boost that they needed. So you can see once July and August rolled around, then Democrats were able to gain the lead. Then it looks like Republicans finally took the lead for good. We may never know the exact extent that that abortion decision had on the election, but it does seem safe to say that the Republicans would have done at least a little bit better if it never happened or went in the other direction. If you get on 538 and look at their final aggregate, they underestimated Republicans by more than one point. They were at 1.2 for the GOP. So you Usually what I hear is real clear politics is a little bit more friendly to the GOP and 538 is a little bit more friendly to the Democrats. Some people prefer one or the other. I usually use real clear politics, but I definitely try to take a look at both. So let's go back to the last presidential election in 2020 and see what happened. On real clear politics, they had Democrats up 6.8, but they actually only won by 3.1. So that is actually a moderately significant overestimation of Democratic support. In the final polls, YouGov had Dems up by 10 and Politico again, even though they had a huge sample size of apparently over 14,000 likely voters. They were still too friendly to the Dems by about four points. Their final percent of 50 for the Dems was not too far off, but they only had the Republicans at 43, so they missed a good chunk of their support. If we go down here and look at the graph, this one there's not really many changes on. Democrats had a lead the entire time, and it seems pretty steady over the entire year. The only thing that changed is both party support increased as the election got closer, and that makes sense. So that was the last presidential election. It was unique. It was during COVID. 
COVID, a lot of stuff happening in that election, the net result in the Electoral College for president was still very narrow. Let's go back two more years and take a look at that blue wave of 2018. At Real Clear Politics, they had the Democrats up 7.3, but the final result was Democrats up 8.4. So not terrible, but a 1% underestimation of support for the Dems. Most of the individual polls were pretty close. CNN is an exception. They overestimated Democrats. And Rasmussen is clearly going to be the worst one on here. They're known to be a little bit more friendly toward the Republicans. And here they had the GOP up by one. So that is a gross error for Rasmussen. If we go down and take a look at the graph, this one is similar to 2020. It seemed like there was going to be a blue wave the entire election. And Democrats held and maintained a lead all the way up until November. So another one where there was not significant movement. Now we also have to keep in mind midterm elections are going to be different from presidential elections. The turnout should be higher during the presidential years, but every election is going to be unique and there could always be something unexpected that takes place. Let's go back to 2016 and look at that presidential election. There the final aggregate had Democrats up 0.6, but it was actually Republicans that won by 1.1. So there the result is actually wrong. It's not off by four or five points, but even 1% in the U.S. House in a close race could mean a handful of seats changing parties. Let's go down here and look at the graph. Here Democrats had the lead the entire time leading up to the election. It wasn't actually until the final week in early November where the GOP started to close the gap. You could see the line shoots up here in the final few days. Now that of course was the election that Trump won and the polls famously underestimated him pretty much across the board. It was similar in 2020 but the result was different. This one at the top of the ticket it did look like Hillary was going to pretty much sweep all the states. She had momentum it looked like Trump was going to do nothing. Maybe that would have been the case if the election were a week earlier but that home stretch is really when the Republicans started to rise up and that's when the gap closed. Let's go back another election to 10 years ago to 2014. This kind of seems like a different era in politics but there the final average had Republicans at 2.4. They actually won by 5.7. That's another three point plus underestimation of the Republican support. Half of them had Democrats with the advantage so not great polling here in 14. If you go down here and look at the timeline there the year before the election Democrats held a lead. Then here's another one where it became back and forth during election year. The lead changed hands several times. It's hard to even keep track of it here. It was in late August and early September that Democrats held the small advantage. It wasn't until about September 8th that the Republicans shot way up and then they maintained about a two or three point lead all the way through election day. This election, even though it was a long time ago, it goes to show that things can change and nobody should ever feel too confident. Now let's go back one more election to 2012. This is the last time Democrats were in power when a presidential election took place and in the generic congressional vote, it was really close but the final average had Republicans up 0.2. It was the Democrats that won it by 1.2. So a small overestimation of support this time in favor of the Republicans. The graph in that one is another one where it's completely back and forth the entire time. There were so many lead changes, including in the final few months, that there's really no way to go into any election and think that nothing is going to change. I've always said complacency can be an issue for each side. When you're on top, especially when there's four, six, or eight months to go, I think that's way too much time to really feel confident about the final result. So again, if we come back full circle here and go to this current election, right now the RCP average is extremely close, Democrats with the slight edge, but as we just went through the recent elections, sometimes things don't change at all the entire year before the election. Some years it changes just one or two times, others it might change five or even ten times. Sometimes the polls can completely misread the electorate, and we've seen them underestimate both sides, the Democrats as well as the Republicans. There's no way to predict it. The only thing you could really do is look at those recent years and be prepared for different outcomes. If I was the Democrats or the Republicans and I had a two or three point lead in this election in the generic congressional vote, I don't think I would feel too confident even into October at this point. This election cycle has been completely crazy, plus we've seen other cycles where there's a lot of movement in the final week. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. There's a lot of times that lower propensity voters don't start paying attention to the election until at least after Labor Day, if not into October. Voter enthusiasm is also going to be a big issue. There could also be an October surprise. There's a lot of things that could happen, so I try to tell people to expect the unexpected. But that's where we're at for now on the generic congressional vote. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about any of this data? Do you think Democrats are looking good for November? Or do you think the polling is underestimating the GOP? Do you think the lead is going to change a few times? Do you think there's going to be a late surge? Let me know your thoughts down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.